man, this shit ain't nothing but a motherfucking power struggle, man. They want to get control of you so their enemy don't have a chance to use you against them. So, you know what I'm saying? You got to maintain your independence. Like we always do about this time. What's going on, folks? It's your boy, Coach, back with another video. And today, we're going to continue with the Rap 48 Laws of Power. Now, in our previous video, we went over Law 19, which is know who you're dealing with. Do not offend the wrong person. And to summarize that, you don't want to go around offending people, creating enemies, because number one, they could be potential allies to you. And number two, if you create them enemies, then you never know how powerful they are. They may come back and crush you completely. Now, the flip side of that is the person that has the power to come back and crush you completely, had you not offended them, they could have been an ally making you more powerful. OK, so something to think about. Now, today, we're going to get into Law 20, which is don't commit to anyone. And for the sake of everybody, I'm going to skip the long history lesson, but I'm still going to give a summary on an important figure in history that did it because you guys have to see that this shit has worked on a grand scale to change the world you know so don't just think of it just in rap you know this is all over all in life okay so let's get into it law 20 do not commit to nobody it is the crash dummy who always rushes to take a side do not commit to any side or cause but yourself by maintaining your independence you become the master of others playing people against one another making them pursue you now, I'm pretty sure y'all don't know who Queen Elizabeth was, but basically Queen Elizabeth ran England back in the 1500s and she never married. Elizabeth knew that getting married could often lead to a female undoing. By marrying and committing to an alliance with one party or nation, the queen becomes in the middle of the conflicts and it's not even her choice. The conflicts may eventually overwhelm her and lead her into her downfall further. Elizabeth had two goals, avoid marriage and avoid war. She managed to combine these goals by dangling the possibility of marriage in order to forge alliances. The moment she committed to any single suitor would have been the moment she lost her power. She had to emanate mystery and desirability, never discouraging everyone's hopes, but never yielding. As the center of attention, she was in control, keeping her independence above all. Elizabeth protected her power and made herself an object of worship. But once she picked one, she's going to turn all those guys into enemies. But if she stays single, she got this guy thinking, oh, I got her. I think I got her because I'm going to give her more. I'm going to give her more. Meanwhile, this guy is probably giving her like the world and she's still just playing all of them, playing all of them. And so the main artist that comes to mind when I think about this law is, of course, The Weeknd. The Weeknd first got on by Drake's co-sign and Drake put him on Take Care, which was Drake's groundbreaking album in 2011. By 2012, Weeknd was signed to Republic Records. And so it begs the question, if Weeknd would have signed under Drake, where would Weeknd be today? This is what I have to fucking eat. Thank you, Warner Publishing and OVO for slowing up my goddamn check for the holiday. <laughs> Maybe Weekend would be Party Next Door, who is another successful artist who is signed under Drake, but he hasn't yet been able to break from under that shadow. So I would say that Party Next Door is a guy who basically failed to adhere to this rule, and The Weekend is a guy who actually maneuvered through it, and then you see their success. Because The Weekend, with his independence, if he wants to, he can go work with Drake. But he don't have to give his best songs to Drake. He don't have to wait for Drake's label to give him the okay to put his stuff out. And if Drake is beefing with Kanye West, The Weeknd is independent. He could go make a song with Kanye West and he could still make a song with Drake, you know, and make a song with Jay-Z. If Jay-Z's beefing with this guy, he could still go because he maintains his independence. But once you get on one side or the other, then for one, you cut off lines of communication you cut off allies and whatever this guy the leader of this side that you chose to commit 
whatever he is, you're under his power because you feel like you have a loyalty to him. Another artist to, to really compare it to is Gunna, Lil Baby, and Young Thug, okay? Because Lil Baby did not sign under Young Thug, Lil Baby has the freedom. Lil Baby can break out and become bigger than Young Thug. But Gunna signed to YSL. He signed to Young Thug. So he's under Young Thug. And it's going to be hard for him to break out and just be more than Young Thug because Young Thug has the power over him. You hear Young Thug say, my artist, my artist, my label, my label. And which artist do you want to be? Do you want to be the guy who hurry ups and rush and signs to a label? And then this label starts beefing with somebody in the industry. Now you can't even collaborate with that in, uh, with that artist that they're beefing with because of your loyalty. Think about the Tory Lanez and Meg Thee Stallion situation, okay? And how the baby failed to adhere to this rule. Because the baby did not stay neutral in the conflict and he decided to work with Tory Lanez, what happens? Well, he cuts off that line of communication with Meg Thee Stallion, but you don't see that he not only cuts off the line of communication to Meg Thee Stallion, he cuts off the line of communication to anything that Rock Nation is doing. So when you look on Twitter and you see the baby asking, what does he got to do to get Jay-Z on the phone? You see what happens when you don't maintain your independence and you choose the wrong side? Now he's cut off whatever, whatever benefit he can get from working with Meg Thee Stallion, working with Jay-Z. He should have just stayed out of it or stayed neutral or what? Pick the proper side. Pick the winning side, okay? So a great way to think about this is Nicki Minaj, man. When she first came up, she came up with Lil Wayne and Young Money, of course. But a lot of people don't know she came up with Gucci Mane, too, because they had the same manager, Deborah Adney, who was Waka Flocka Flames' mother. Now, she wasn't fully waving the Young Money flag 100% then. So she was able to get on songs and do stuff with Gucci, but still get on songs and do stuff with Lil Wayne. But had she waved that flag too early for Lil Wayne, maybe she breathes resentment in Gucci. He like, I don't want to give her that look. I don't want to give her that show. I don't want to give her that feature. Let her go with Wayne. Something to think about. If you want to stay up to date to all my newest content and all my newest courses, I highly encourage you to join the Patreon, okay? For $10, you'll be able to learn any rap skill you're having trouble with, any songwriting skill you're having trouble with, branding, marketing, and also... You'll gain access to my Secret Society a &R Discord, okay? That's where me and a couple artists, we're sharing ideas and we're sharing content and we're sharing gems every day. You got Coach 24-7 in there. Now, if you're a serious artist, I hope to see you there.